Look at the camera smile. It's a great day at Medicare Gurus, and let me tell you something, brother. It's a great morning, and what we're gonna do? We're gonna help people get connected to Medicare, brother. It's a morning. I'm gonna kick some apps. None of them. They're not there. Crypto. Captain America's girlfriend, Arthur Peggy. Shelby, Peggy. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Yo, ooh, sound the door, man. Yeah. I think it's hard to blend it in. So what's up? That's uh, what I mean. Dude. Assad, uh, uh, Assad, dude. Uh, dude. Monday motivation. Let's go. Good. Monday morning. That's more the energy. <laughs> Let's right go. There. Gotta be the coffee. <laughs> Monday morning. Week two. It's kind of like week two of AEP. Kind of weird because it started on a Friday. Hey, we're going after a full fledged. It's all about that BBI, baby. I'll be Brock insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything to say. It's too early to be on a camera. Sad. Sad. It's a great day. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> what are we talking about? Whatever you want to. It is a great day. I'll concur. Yep, that's all I got, man. That's it? That's it, man. Man, I was expecting more from you than anybody else. You want story time? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Happy Monday. It's a great day to be here. Great day to work. Let's get after it, baby. It's a, I, I take oh, hold on, wait. You cracked my camera a little bit. Oh, no, it's a plan. <laughs> Why are you hiding? <laughs> How I feel about this Monday. Oh man. What's up? We go the pack. Yeah, man. Just trying to make it happen. One more week. Yes, Let's sir. do it. Both of you want to say anything to this precious camera? Uh, but, uh, yeah. Morning sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> New opportunities. <laughs> I'm gonna talk this morning about commission breath. Who knows what commission breath is? Who thinks they've ever had it? <laughs> mission breath is when you start thinking too much about the commission and less about how to help people in front of you, how to leave them in a better spot. You're thinking about, like, what do I sell here so I can make the most money? It's not a good idea. What you want to do is figure out how to believe in a package that is both profitable and covers risk and leaves the client better. You get to the point where you're selling people too much stuff, you're focusing on the wrong thing, and so we want to avoid commission breath. So in order to do so, I was like, I think somebody was in here said you guys, were, some of you, the LOA agents were talking about what their goal is income-wise, you know, and people were at different numbers. Sometimes I wonder where these numbers come from. You don't really know how much money you want until you get there and you think, that's not what I thought it was and you want more or maybe you get to a certain level and you're like that's way more than i thought it was it all depends on what your kind of self-actualization you know uh, height feels like you know um, everybody thinks they want a certain number and they get there and it's either not as much as they thought it was or it's just or it's too much or it's enough um some people would say that it's never enough but i think that person is the person that believes that it's it becomes a part of about the climbing of the income right but if you're if you're in i did the math for this for like the loa position in the thomas street office um how to get to 250 to 300 thousand a year because that seemed to be a common that about a common number you heard when you when people yeah. were talking about that no i think you're right i think as you mature you realize that a hundred thousand is not as much as you think it is yeah, I think it was between probably 150 and 300. Okay, so I just did some math here, and I used, I broke down this weekend, um, the average of what a lot of you guys were writing weekly, and then based on what you get paid on it, how much you'd have to write to get there, how long it would take, based on the compounding and first year, and some things you could do to maybe break through certain barriers if you wanted to, um, but you don't have to. And I based this on Jackson's number, because it's consistent. It's a consistent, you know, flow. He's come in and go pretty quick. Um, I didn't base it on Stark's 75 application weeks in the middle of July, or uh, you know, or or the, any anywhere near the bottom. I based it on the average, consistent, showing up, talking to people, helping as many people as possible. Numbers, okay. And so, when I broke it down, this is five years into that position. 
the total based on compounding only products, meaning products that have residual income. You'd be at, and this is not including ancillary, 213,995. This is a pretty good comp plan considering you have zero investment into it really, just showing up and riding business. Um, that does include your base income too. That's five years in, average numbers, just going and, going and flowing and showing. You add in ancillary, it's about 232, 139 a year. You add in life, and I did this based on some life numbers we're not doing, some annuity things, just to kind of give you guys target. If you referred $250,000 in annuities, we'll do life first. If you wrote one $800 premium, which is the average premium final expense policy a week, you added that into what you were doing. Not term, it's different. Start on writing more term, Jesus. I'm so, sick. I'm so sick of these term policies and all their follow-up. Uh, if you had that one final expense policy in weekly, on average, gets you up in that same fifth year. It's more like the end of the fifth year, by the way. 248, 283. You know why I say it's the end of the fifth year? Because of the, the compounding effect takes the full five years going into the sixth year to be walking into a monthly income that equals that. Some people don't get that until you've lived through it a little while. Um, plus annuity referrals. And I did this based off, I think if y'all got into a system, every LO agent in this office could refer 250,000 in annualized annuity premium a month. And if you added that, it would get you up to 304, 533. And honestly, that's on you not even having to write the app. Just uncover it, refer it, and take the referral fee off of it. And you're getting that much more. So that kind of gives you an effect. Now, if you're an admin, you're probably thinking, well, I want to be an agent because that's a lot more money than I can make as an admin person. That's true. So work really hard. And if you decide you want to do that, you can. It's not all fun and games. I think you, know, you guys are probably having to deal with some BS, compliance side of things dot your I's and cross your T's, um, but I think it's an extremely fair path to just come in and work really hard every day and commit to it. By the way, I did these on averages without AEP, so really you probably get there faster because you have AEP surges. I didn't want to add the AEP business because sometimes there's some churn in the AEP business, like, like Stark's writing a bunch of drug plans this year, and the next year <clears throat> some of those drug plans get rewritten by other people, and we don't really worry about that too much because you're always... There's just so many, there's no way you can only focus on yours and make the whole business flow appropriately. But I think if you understand that this is a consistent trajectory of just showing up and doing the right thing, you don't have to squeeze out more money today by doing something in the gray area or something unethical. If you just keep helping people, you'll, you know, and if you're not at the average, if you're even lower than average, it's still just going to be a slightly adjusted trajectory. It's not like it's going to be some sort of, you know, well, I didn't hit the exact number Jackson did, so I'm making half of that. It's proportional. So, I mean, it's a good trajectory, and, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty sexy, I think. I mean, you think about other jobs, you know, people, you, you like, get what a dollar and a half raise a year where if you do this and you do it effectively and you do it right and do it compliantly and keep your license and do all the things you need to do you can be there in four years as opposed to working your entire life working for that so and you can go and fast, start the business and make more but just so you know it's really hard is it not hard Alan? it is hard <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, is not hard. it is very hard you're spending all the money and you're trying to create the, the trajectory and the traction and it is it is difficult. And um, we've created some other businesses that the name brand, the old name brand here doesn't help with. And we spent, like I mean, you guys like on the agent side, for instance, we spent, I'd say two years marketing to agents without selling them anything before we could actually now, we can only afford to do that because we have the other business floating everything. But most people can't sit around for two years and not make any money. You know. So anyway, created a pretty good 
trajectory there. And I, I only I only wanted to bring that up because I don't want uh, I don't want anybody feeling like they have to do anything crazy to make any money. You just have to understand that you're letting time be your friend. Showing up every day, doing the right thing. No one application to make another hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars is worth losing your license over getting Section Eight, you know, complaints. Now, you, you, it's going to happen that you get complaints because people will file stupid complaints sometimes. I've had complaints where people said he told me all my drugs were going to be free on that drug plan. I don't lie to people to sell a drug plan. Okay, I don't lie to people at all about what I'm selling, but you know, obviously, I'm not lying to get a you know, extra forty bucks. Um, but people will do that. But if you're doing the right thing all the time, you're looking up stuff and you walk away from a sale because it doesn't make sense. Now I'm not telling you I want you to walk away from sales. I want you to do everything you can to help somebody. But you don't have to bend the rules to help somebody. You don't have to like start to mold things. If you can make a great rational explanation for why something should be changed, that's great. But if you start to like lose track of why am I changing this guy again, or you can't make it, or you're thinking you're, you're bending it too much in your head, you might be okay to walk away. And you might be able to get a lot of referrals just telling people, hey, it looks like you're in the best place. How, how many times have you told somebody they, they were in the best place with an advantage plan somewhere, and they asked you if they could be your, you could be their agent? I mean, happens to Johnny a lot. It happened to me last week. So, well, you know. Bob tells me, he's like, my one thing I'm worried about Johnny is his, his ethics. I actually hear Johnny turn down quite a few applications when they fin when they, he finds out they're in the best plan. So, um, you know, but I do worry about everybody feeling the need, especially early on. Does anybody know what Maslow's hierarchy of needs are, is? So Maslow's hierarchy of needs talks about what, what your, how your needs evolve over time. A lot of times it correlates with how your income goes up and how you, where you're at in your life and what, what's important to you. And, uh, but the, the basic core of Maslow's hierarchy needs is physiological. It's how do I feed myself and have shelter and be able to afford my basic necessities and take care of my family. And so people that are worried about that are the ones that sometimes make the most questionable calls. But you have to figure out a way to get past that basis point. And so that'd be somebody that may be newer that doesn't have, hasn't scaled that income a little bit. Um, but you have to understand, and you don't understand, so I'm telling you that time is your friend if you just, if you can get through those hard times. It might, it'd be great to cross sell an extra filing expense policy here and sell some ancillary to help, you know, boost that income. But don't do it in a way that, you know, cuts your legs off down the road because you, Paired an ancillary policy without telling them. Um, you got halfway through an application and they tell you they're taking Repentarol for Parkinson's and you and you just submit it anyway and don't put that on there. Or, you know, somebody's on the best Medicare Advantage BSNIP plan and you tell them to change doctors and everything because there's five dollars more on a food card monthly here, even though technically they had more dental or like. Don't start pushing them to do things just to try to make an extra buck because long term, that's not the agenda. The agenda is to leave people better than we found them. And if we're leaving people better than we found them, then we can scale and grow and everybody can be happy. And you can feel good when you make money. That's kind of the first thing that came to mind with me was like the DSNIPs. If you have somebody on one plan, obviously, like we only have two primary plans available. And they may be on the best plan for them, but you know you don't need to switch them just to make the sale. Obviously, if they are getting a little bit more OTC or, or dental, and they value that, then you know it's it's better for them. Or if their network's better, or you're giving them more options, is better. But I wouldn't say if they have this one, switch them to this one just because now you're getting paid. Like make sure that truly is the best plan for them, and that goes down to your ethics and just being, you know the best and most professional person that you could possibly be and just living by that every day is treat everybody you know like it's family like it's your mother sitting there and what would you do for them would you change her plan just so you could get paid you know no you, well you might i don't know <laughs> but you, you shouldn't you know <laughs> but 
again, when you're, when you're, when you're sitting down with everybody, just do what's truly best for them and everything will work itself out. But that was the biggest example that come to my mind when you said that was like the D snips and how we're dealing with a lot of D snips. Um, just for example, like last week I had an agent call me, um, and they were on a, the, the client was on a Cigna plan and it was truly the best plan. And I told him, I was like, look, man, like that one's, that's tough. Like you may just have to walk out of there and, and let them know, like if they ever need any help, they have your business card. Uh, but you just have to do what's best for for them. You can annotate what they have, you know, somewhere in the CRM, and then maybe later on go back and find the people that have that plan when there is a plan that comes out that's better for them. But you you uh, you don't you don't have to you don't have to bend any kind of facts or truth to try to get them to change. Um, the and, and I'm not saying this because I think anybody's doing it. It's just that I've been a salesperson. I've been core at the bottom coming in just like everybody else. You know, I'm sure I've told you guys this before, but I didn't come in and Bob didn't say, here's $200,000. If you don't, if you know him really well, you, that's not, he's not throwing money at it. I came in basically the same position as y'all. Actually, it wasn't as good at, at that time. There weren't as many products to sell and, um, it's gotten busier. Of course, we have more people, so it's a little bit more competitive. Um, but, you know, and actually when I came in, he wouldn't pay you on anything that came off of TV advertising. <laughs> so that'd be bad for you guys. Um, but when we, when we came in, you know, I know what it was like to, you know, be like, man, this is really slow to build. But you have to understand you're in a compound residual game. If you want fast money with lower limitations, you can go sell cars. You can probably, or you can go out and sell final expense only, and you can probably get up to you know seventy five hundred thousand really quick, and put you plateau. <clears throat> so, and most of those guys are out there saying, "I made." You find me the guy in final expense that says he made half a million dollars in one year. Normally, he did that one time, and then he started recruiting, and he doesn't sell anymore because you want to, like your your wife will leave you, or your kids will know who you are, or you want to blow your brains out after a while. You want to sit in that many trailers? You want me to do the math on how many trailers you got to sit in? <laughs> Half a million dollars on final expense? A lot. Think about how much they have to spend on clothes. He was burning his clothes every day. 